Several years back, the museum was preparing paintings for an exhibit of works by American Modernist entirely from the collection. The Modernist collections at the museum are really wonderful, and many of them have quite interesting frames. We were busy reuniting our pictures with their original frames, some of which had been held in art storage for quite a long time. When it came time to look at the beautiful Synchromis painting by Thomas Hart Benton, otherwise known as Bubbles, with its original frame, we were faced with something that simply didn't make sense. The painting is abstract, colorful, ephemeral, with many cool tones. The frame we found, supposedly its original, was large and chunky, a brown painted house molding attached to linen covered liner. The construction appeared strange and crude. We brought the painting into the conservation lab with its frame. During examination, I realized that a piece of the linen wasn't glued very well on its liner. I lifted the edge to have a look underneath and found green paint. I then realized that all of the linen was covering an entirely green frame. We decided to deconstruct the adapted frame to see what lay beneath. It turned out that the later moldings had been screwed completely through the frame front and back so there were many holes on the face of the frame, as well as a large L-shaped split running through two rails and through the lower left miter. Before considering treatment, I wrote to Dr. Henry Adams, the leading authority on Thomas Hart Benton, to see what he thought about the frame. According to him, it was not at all unlikely that Benton, a skilled craftsman, would have made the frame in keeping with the precepts of synchromism's color harmony. According to Adams, the subject of bubbles is simply this color system. He also says in the catalog, Thomas Hart Benton, an American original, that H.L. Mencken purchased bubbles and possibly even gave it its name as a joke. Benton was calling these abstractions organizations at the time. Treating the frame was something of an undertaking. I had to hand saw off sections of the molding which had been glued onto the reverse of the frame. I tried to preserve as much of the surface of the frame as possible in case there were inscriptions or labels of any kind. Using a scalpel and solvents, I peeled off the final layers of glue and new wood. Eventually, I did find an inscription in pencil which had become sort of embedded in the wood glue. There is definitely a B and then some other letters which are much harder to understand. I started looking at signatures by Benton and really didn't see any that were exactly alike, so I put that aside. In January of 2009, the BMA's conservation lab was able to access a portable XRF for the first time, which is an X-ray fluorescence spectrometer. And we started using the instrument to identify metals and pigments on different objects. I put it to use along with our senior paintings conservator, Mary Sabera, and we took XRF spectra from sites on the painting as well as the frame and compared the spectra. The green paints in the composition of the painting and the frame were nearly identical and follow the same peaks exactly, although vary in height. Because the frame has a different preparation layer than the painting, they couldn't be entirely the same. I finished treating the frame in 2013, having removed glue and overpaint, infilling holes and in-painting cracks. I finally installed the painting into it. The end result for me is astonishing. There have been different reactions to it, some exuberant and some not so positive, but the fact that the paint analysis was so overwhelmingly convincing, the conversations I had with Dr. Henry Adams, and the fact that the frame is perfectly modernist, I feel really happy with the reunion. The painting is so rare for Benton's career, with many of these early 20th century abstractions lost, it's really a treasure to have it here. Almost as an added bonus is the fact that the painting was purchased, owned, and given to the museum by H.L. Mencken years later in 1947. In an article in the Baltimore Sun dated November 20th, 1997, where they were highlighting what happened 50 years ago, on December 2nd, H.L. Mencken will present an early painting by Thomas Hart Benton to the Baltimore Museum of Art today, on condition the museum evaluate it, quote, so I can claim it on my income tax. Mencken certainly knew Benton, as the artist had illustrated a publication for him called Europe After 815, which was published in 1914. I became hopeful that as a Baltimorean myself, I could access the H.L. Mencken collection at the Enoch Pratt Free Library downtown and find a picture of the painting in one of his homes. I was graciously hosted by the curator of the collection, Mr. Vincent Fitzpatrick, who was very kind in showing me Mencken's personal scrapbooks. There were all kinds of pictures and inscriptions in the scrapbooks, even pictures of house interiors where I'd hoped 
I would see a picture of bubbles hanging on a wall. Unfortunately, I never did, but I did learn an amazing fact. Vince told me that if we had not received the painting when we did, we may never have come to own it. The very next year, Mencken suffered a devastating stroke. The stroke left him nearly unable to read or write and able to speak only with difficulty. It's a remarkable example of an early painting and has such an interesting and curious history, its reframings and alterations notwithstanding. I doubt that Mencken would have changed the original frame on the picture, but we aren't sure when or why it was altered, only lucky to have it back in its original intended state.